Welcome. The topic for this video is going to be mirror equation. This is the equation that tells you precisely where the image is going to be if you know what the object, where the object's position is and what the focal length of the mirror is. So this is an equation that connects, that connects the object distance which we usually call as u, the image distance which we call as v and the focal length f. Now usually if you look into your textbooks or in most of the websites or something you're gonna see the derivation done in a classic standard format. Now I'm gonna do this derivation in a little different manner so I don't want you to use this derivation for your exams because I came up with this derivation I don't, I don't know whether it's there somewhere else but I actually rediscovered this derivation all by myself when I was in high school and I, and I asked my teacher whether I could use this derivation and, and she said and I quote I'm not allowed to do that. I don't know what that means. So I'm not going to comment more. But I'm just going to put a disclaimer and say don't use this for your exams. But this is a beautiful, elegant derivation. And it's going to take very few number of steps. We have a concave mirror. And I have drawn a parallel ray. A ray which is parallel to the principal axis. And we've seen on many occasions now that this ray after reflection is going to go through the principal focus. And... Uh, and this is the normal and this is the angle of incidence. So before I begin derivation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define an angle over here, okay? I'm going to call this guy over here, this angle. I'm going to call that angle as alpha. Because you will be seeing that we are going to play with angles. That's all, okay? If this angle is alpha, look at alternate interior angles tells us that this whole angle is alpha, this whole angle. But this whole angle is divided into two equal angles because this is the angle of incidence. And this is the angle of uh, reflection. So this angle must be alpha by 2 and making this angle alpha by 2. All right, now let's keep an object somewhere. I'm going to keep the object outside the center of curvature. I'm going to keep somewhere over here. Now let's draw a ray of light from the object all the way to this point, exactly what we have been doing earlier. So that's going to be my incident radiation and one more ray of light that goes all the way from the object straight to the pole. Again, just like how I define an angle alpha over here, I'm going to define an angle over here. And I'm going to call that angle as angle theta 1. And notice, because of alternate interior angles, again, this angle is theta 1. And notice, this angle is the angle of incidence. I'm not going to put that put any names over there but because I don't have space over there but that's the angle of incidence which I've showed with double angle over there now we know what's going to happen after reflection it's going to maintain the angle the angle of incidence is going to be equal to angle of reflection so I have to make sure the reflection angle is exactly the same and it's going to form it's going to come back over here and this ray of light is going to come back over here and the two rays are going to meet together giving me a real image at this point Let's call that as I. Okay, just like how I defined angle theta 1, I'm going to define angle theta 2 here. This is the angle for my reflected ray with the principal axis. And notice, again, due to alternate interior angles, this is theta 2. This whole angle from here all the way till here is theta 2. Okay, now comes the interesting part. And I want you to carefully follow me because this is the last part of the derivation. We're almost done, okay? Notice that if this is the angle of incidence, so this is the angle of reflection and the angle of incidence is exactly equal to angle of reflection. However, notice that theta 1 plus this angle is alpha by 2. But this angle over here is also alpha by 2 and these two angles are equal to each other. From symmetry, I hope you can see this angle must also be equal to theta 1. Can you see that? That's all you need to understand. If you take, if you need some time, take a moment and understand that because that's the last part to understand. Okay. Once we do this, now we are almost done. Because notice the total angle from here to here, this total angle of this yellow is theta 1 plus theta 2. But notice that total angle is just alpha. Alpha equals theta 1 plus theta 2 and my dear friends and my dear 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 friends this is the mirror equation 
<laughs> now, now you might be thinking, wait, that's not a mirror equation because the equation is supposed to connect u, v, and f, and I will do that in just one short step now, but wait a minute. But I want you to look at the beauty of this equation. This equation is so elegant. I don't know why I love this equation so much. Okay, now I'm gonna come back to the familiar equation. And to come to the familiar equation where I actually connect the object distance and image distance and everything, let me call this point as m, and let's use the arc formula. If you use the arc formula, alpha is mp divided by pf. So this is mp divided by pf. And that is equal to theta 1, which is mp divided by po, plus theta 2, which is mp divided by pi. You can take mp common and cancel that. And guess what you have now? You now have 1 over the focal length, 1 over the object distance, plus 1 over the image distance. Now when we substitute, we really have to use sign conventions to make a general formula. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk about sign conventions in great detail in the next video. But let me just substitute the values over here. This is 1 by f, mirror equation. And look at the number of steps, so short, OK? Now when you're using this equation, you really need to use sign conventions. You see, the thing is, this equation works perfectly as long as your object, image, and the principal focus are on the same side. When they're on the same side, you really don't have to use any signs or something. You can just treat them to be all positive, okay? And there's no general rule of how to use it, but uh, I'm gonna teach you what the sign conventions are in the next episode. So this is a simple formula where if you know what F is and U is, you can calculate what V is. This is the connection, this is the main equation. So see you next time.